When Pharaoh's horses, chariots and horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought the waters of the sea back over them, but the Israelites walked through the sea on dry ground. Then Miriam, the prophet, Aaron's sister, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women followed her with timbrels and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, Sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted, both horse and rider he has hurled into the sea. The picture that we're looking at today is a picture of Miriam. And Miriam appears three times in the Old Testament. The first time is at the beginning of the book of Exodus, when the Pharaoh decrees that all the male Israelite babies are to be drowned. And if you remember, Moses' mother saves him by placing him on the Nile in a basket. And we're told that Moses' sister stood on the bank of the river to find out what would happen. And when Pharaoh's daughter discovers the basket and realizes it was a Hebrew child, Miriam's quick to act and she offers to get a Hebrew nursemaid for the baby and she fetches none other than Moses' mother. We hear about her later in the story of the Exodus when she disobeys Moses and gets leprosy. But this story is just after the Israelites have left Egypt. Led by Moses, they've crossed over the Red Sea and upon their miraculous rescue from the Egyptian army, now drowned, Moses and the Israelites sing a hymn of praise to God's power, known as the Song of the Sea. And when they finished, Miriam, now identified as a prophet, takes a timbrel and along with the other Israelite women, she dances, plays, and sings the chorus that Moses has just sung. Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, both horse and rider he has hurled into the sea. If you look at the picture, it's joyous, full of life, jubilation, celebration, lots of oranges and reds, picturing joy, exuberance. That's the painting. Now, for some details. In the background of the picture, you can see the pyramids. And the pyramids are there as a reminder of the past, where the people have come from. The context is slavery, back breaking work as slaves to the Egyptians, making bricks and building. By miracle, Moses has led them at night in haste across the sea. Pharaoh changed his mind and the army were close behind them. In front of them was the sea. But Moses led them across the sea as if on dry land and Pharaoh's army were drowned. It's an escape from something bad in their pasts. And in all of our lives, the past isn't dead, nor should it be. It's very much alive in us. Our pasts have shaped us. They've made us who we are to a certain degree. Because of our experiences in the past, our characters have been formed. In a real sense, the past is present with us all the time. I stand, sit before you today with my upbringing, my school, my work, my experiences of hurt, rejections, encouragements, all shaping who I am. We should go without saying that the past is the past. And what we have done is done and there's nothing we can do about it. And the pyramids are in the background now. 
as Miriam starts to dance and begin a journey forward. The second feature of the picture is the timbrel, the small drum. There's a phrase that goes like this, faith is packing your timbrel. Faith is packing your timbrel. And the people of Israel left Egypt in such haste the most famously didn't even have time to let the bread break to com bake to completion. It had to be unleavened. And they didn't have removal vans to pack up. They could only take what they could sling on the backs. But they remembered their timbrels. They took these little drums along with their precious and limited cargo space imagine a few women running among them all saying don't forget your timbrel as they prepared to flee Egypt what would you do now if you had to flee what would you take with you would we have the faith to know that things would work out for the best with God Would we take practical things, clothes and food? Or fun stuff like a drum? Miriam and the women of the Exodus set a stage for us. They have an instinct that things will get better and God will provide. God is present and they have faith to pack their timbrels. Look at the mouth of Miriam. Out of her mouth comes the words of the song that she's just heard sung by all Moses and all the men. Sing to the Lord, for he's highly exalted. Both horse and driver he has hurled into the sea. But the difference this time is the women don't just sing, they dance, they praise, they celebrate God's extraordinary power. And I love this picture, this picture of dancing feet. I hate dancing, I, can't, I, I find it embarrassing. <coughs> but there's an element here of truly letting yourself go. All pretenses, all stressed, She's got her shoes off and she's simply dancing in spontaneous joy. It's an extension of what's going on inside of the joy of release from Egypt. But the joy is overflowing. It's infectious. And all the women join with her in dancing. And it's a model of uh, the relationship between prayer, singing, music, emotions. We seldom dance which brings us to the theme of the painting celebration what does celebration mean to you going out fireworks candles a cake a drinks party a barbecue a meal out laughter life is so wild and chaotic and beautiful and sacred and difficult all at the same time and celebrating in the midst of all that wildness and chaos makes the beauty and sacredness much clearer it's God's great gift that we can celebrate celebration at its core is the practice of choosing to be truly present in the important moments of lives, birthdays, wedding anniversaries, baptisms, sports finals, our festivals. I want to finish with a thought about what I believe Miriam is celebrating. 
She's described in this passage as a prophet. But the only female in the Old Testament to be called such. And I honestly believe as she's travelled from the Red Sea, from slavery into a new life, she celebrates the one who is to come. Jesus travels around all the Jewish celebrations, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, Feast of the Trumpets, Yom Kippur, Sukkoth. He didn't live at a pace, Jesus, that he was preoccupied with his own agenda. He wasn't so bent out of shape about what was wrong with the world that he didn't notice what was good. And he enjoyed, he enjoyed a wedding feast, he provided gallons of wine. And I picture him stamping his feet to the beat, clapping his hands over his head, swaying, laughing, turning round, maybe even singing words of songs that were played. He tells stories of lost sheep who were found and there was a celebration, lost coins, where there was a party. A lost son returns after years of depravity and sin and there's a celebration which leads to a party and the killing of the fatted calf but we had to celebrate, says the father, because the brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost, but has been found. Miriam may be dancing for the coming one, who like her celebrates life in all its fullness. The coming one whose red blood on the cross allows us to cross from sin to life, from death to resurrection, from selfishness to lives lived in service. Put this picture in your Bibles, Exodus chapter 15, and as we attend church, as we sit in church, as we partake in church, let us, like Miriam, be the ones who celebrate. This song sums up what I've just said. Yeah. 
across the ocean As they watched and they clapped They began to sway Drawn to ride away And all my brothers began to dance They danced with us today And Miriam took her to roll out And all the people danced And Miriam took her to roll out Shores by the shores of the river.